focus for the month of December, the last month in the year 2020, is God is committed to leading me. God is committed to leading me. God is committed to leading me. Praise the Lord. And our anchor text is for the month is in the book of Psalm 32, verse 8. Psalm 32, verse 8 says, I will instruct thee, I will teach thee in the way that you should go, I will guide you with my own eyes. In other words, I will make sure, I will make sure that you will not take, you will not make a mistake, you will not take a wrong turn. I will instruct you, I will teach you in the way you will go. So God is committed to leading us, is committed to leading us. And we are taking our part three of our teaching series, Understanding Divine Leading. Understanding Divine Leading. Understanding Divine Leading. Jesus Christ said in the book of John chapter 16 verses 12 to 15, he said, I have yet many things that I need to say to you, but you cannot understand them or you cannot bear them now. How be it when the spirit of truth, which is Holy Spirit, is come, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that is what he will speak. And he will show you things to come. He will glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and he will show it unto you, all things that the Father at our mind, therefore said I, that he shall take of mine and he shall show it unto you. God is committed to leading us. And the way God leads us, he leads us through the help of the Holy Spirit. He leads us through the help of the Holy Spirit, but in diverse ways. He leads us through the help of the Holy Spirit, but in diverse ways. He leads us through the word of God, with the help of the Holy Spirit guiding us in the word, and brooding on the same word to us, God leads and guides and directs us. But the key thing and the most important thing that we must know is that God is committed to leading and guiding every one of us according to that psalm 32 verse 8 god is committed is committed to leading me god is committed is leading you god speaks to us every day god calls for our attention all the time god tries to gain our attention all the time but then are we paying attention to god are we paying attention to God? We said in the first week that the world has made it easy for humankind not to listen to God. He made it easy through the means of technology, most importantly. Technology is very good, but when it's abused, it can become some, something else. Praise the Lord. Especially with the help of the social media. You know... There is so much noise that it stifles the voice of God that we can, if we are not sensitive as children of God, we cannot hear what God is saying. Even though God is committed, even though God wants to speak to us every time, and even though God is speaking all the time, God is speaking all the time. God is speaking all the time. God wants to speak to us. He wants to show you and show me His plan. Is the one that has created me, every parent, every good parent now, let me put it right, every good parent, they want to pay attention, they want to guide, they want to direct their children so that they can fulfill the plan and purpose of God for, our, for their life. The same with our God. He said in the book of Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11, he said, 
there is a thought that he has for us there is a plan that he has for us he said it's a good plan it's not evil so we have the responsibility to know that plan that is not evil which is good and god speaks it to us every day he tries to guide us in so many ways in so many ways he's trying to speak to us in so many ways he wants to speak to us like a father will speak to his children he wants to speak to us like a father we speak to his children and he does that lightly with the help of the holy spirit in our life and this morning we are going to be looking at two ways that god speaks to us two ways we talked last week we talked about god speaking to us through our own thoughts and desires and he speaks to us through wisdom as well okay so this morning we are going to be focusing on nature god speaks to us he speaks to us through nature he speaks to us through nature and i want us to follow and follow very well nature around us they speaks to us and they reveals the truth about jehovah god to us Nature reveals to us the truth about Jehovah God to us. Nature are the handiwork of God and God can use them to speak to us and to speak to our situation per time. God used nature to speak to our situation per time. He can use nature to shape our views or to alter our views. God speaks to us through nature. Flip your Bible with me to the book of Psalm 19, verses 1 to 3. Psalm 19, verses 1 to 3 said, The heaven declared the glory of God, and the firmament shows the handiwork of God. Day unto day they speak. And night unto night they show knowledge. He said, There is no speech nor language where the voice of nature is not heard. So God speaks to us with everything around us if only we are able to pay attention and we are sensitive enough to pick from them what God is saying to us per time. He said in the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 11, verse 14, he said, does not even nature itself teach you? Does not even nature itself teach you that if a man had long hair, it is a shame unto him? Although that is not our focus, that's not where we are dwelling on. We are taking the part A of it. You see, A and B. He said, Does not even nature itself teach you? So nature teach us, nature speaks to us. I said they are the handiwork of God and they reveal the mind of God to us all the time. And God used them to alter our views or shape our view. Case in point, I will use, there was a day many years back in 20, I want to say 2020, 2009, 10, there about, around that time, a particular day, I was watching television and then there is this advert that came on the screen to me it was um, a charity organization adopt I mean they were, they were talking about adopting animals specifically tiger adopting the tiger praise the Lord adopting tiger and uh, you know as human we think I'm like that day these people hey these people with all this tiger adopting tiger and guess what the holy spirit immediately on the spot there was there was no pastor to teach me this or to tell me that it was the spirit of god inside of me he rebuked me on the spot he said that thought was a wrong thought and what the holy spirit just fired to me was in the book of mark 
chapter 16 verse 15 he said and he said unto them go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature to every creature the gospel is is about peace and love true of us he said they said adopt the tiger these are tiger that are lost tiger and they want people to adopt them of course you adopt them virtually you pay a certain amount of money for them those organization to look after those tiger now the Holy Spirit was saying, telling me that is the love of God they are showing that's part of the gospel that's deep but that's God he used, you know you to alter my view and shape my understanding praise the Lord so the nature speaks to us I read about the book a, a book I read in a book about a lady he went mountain climbing right there had been issue going on in a marriage of course the home was not settled it's in america and she went mountain climbing and uh, she got to a particular place on the mountain and then she saw you know dark cloud cover the landscape she couldn't see well and the holy spirit fired into her straight away that's the cloud covering her marriage using nature to speak to her and then she prayed about it and then they began to experience peace in that home so god uses different there are different things that god uses to he uses to speak to us per time if only we can pay attention if only we can pay attention if only we can pay attention job chapter 12 verses 7 to 10 he said but ask now the beasts and they shall teach thee and the fowls of the hair and they shall tell thee or speak to the heart and they shall teach thee and the fishes of the sea shall declare unto thee who knoweth not all these that the hand of the lord hath wrought this in whose hand is the soul of every living thing and the breath of all mankind praise the lord the nature speaks god speaks through nature to us he speaks through nature to us this is winter season where you see all trees you see leaves falls off from all trees every tree now i mean in my in my in my area we have that issue all the time you see the leaves fall off and everywhere god might be speaking to someone but it takes you see that's god reveals things to us it's a revelation god can bring revelation and knowledge to you over certain situation now god can reveal to someone there he can reveal to someone that this testimony of these three that are falling off there will be another season when uh, the autumn come now and you see them they bloom again they brings they brings up a new life so it's a testimony that god will bring to our lives back and our lives will begin to bloom in other words somebody is going through a particular situation going through a particular challenge in life god can speak to that individual even through that trees in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 3 from verse 1 to 8, it talked about season. That life is seasonal. That there is a time to be born. There is a time that people will die. There is a time for people to love. There is a time that people will cry. Praise the Lord. So when you put all these things together and you see the same thing happening in nature, you know that the same can happen to man and man can come out of that situation. In other words, there is no situation that is permanent. Praise the Lord. A life that is going through certain things now will come into its full bloom in the name of Jesus Christ. And I prophesy in the name of Jesus Christ that whatsoever anyone may be going through right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, anything that looks like dryness or anything that looks like is not speaking, God will take you to your full bloom in the name of Jesus Christ. I said, God will take you to your full bloom in the name of Jesus Christ. Give us this. Media, can you give us this image on the screen? Give us that image on the screen. Now, when I was doing 
my studies, the Spirit of God just ministered that to me. And I look for this image. If you look at that image on the screen, you will see two different images. You see a flower coming out of an asphalt. And you see a flower coming out of a concrete. Praise the Lord. God can use that situation to speak into someone's life. That no matter how hard it is, my case will be different. No matter how hard, so God speak, he, he speaks to us through nature. He speaks, to, so there is nothing to be discounted around us. If only we can think enough. The Spirit of God will brood upon that thing in our heart and begin to make revelation out of it. Praise the Lord. So God speaks in different ways. How can a flower coming out of the road asphalt? I mean, how did it, how did it happen? Is God showing us something? He's speaking to us. Concrete. And finds his way out. I've seen a picture. As a matter of fact, I was looking for that picture yesterday. I couldn't find it. A purple. Purple grew out of a, 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 a crevice on, uh, from the rock. Rock. Rock now. I mean rock. And it came out. Purple. And it he has purple, he has purple, purple fruits. He has purple fruit on it. Purple fruit. Purple fruit. That day I saw it, I, 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 I marveled that God is, God speaks to us in different ways. In different ways. That no matter a situation may be, ah, my God. No matter how terrible that situation may be, only hold on to the hand of God. His hand never change. He will bring you out of it. It will bring you out of I don't know what anybody may be going through. I don't know. But God knows. And God is saying to you this morning. And he's telling you that that situation is a walkover. He's telling you specifically. He's speaking to you expressly this morning. God is speaking to somebody specifically. And you know what, what he says to one, he says to all. He's saying something to somebody that no matter how terrible the terrain may be, I'm still God. I am God of all the heavens and the earth. I will bring nothing out of, I'll bring something out of nothing. I bring something out of nothing. No matter how hard that situation may be, no matter how tough, ah, I've shared my testimony severally here. It's my story, so I can't be tired of saying it. I've, I've went through, ah, ask my better half, she will tell you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But one thing, in all those situations, God gave me an assurance. There is one thing that God gave me, and I appreciate God for it. Every time of my life, he gave me the spirit of faith. He gave me the spirit of faith. Not casting my head down, but believing against all belief. Hoping against, you see, that's, God speaks in many ways, that, but we have that one thing to work with God. Our faith. No matter what we may be going through, God is God of all flesh. Now, this time of the year, I mean, last week, two weeks ago, perhaps, you see there is a lot of wind, right? The, what does wind? You know, when I was studying, the Spirit of God just brought that thing to me. That when the wind blows, you see that it blows. You, everybody just see wind blows. It blows. Wind is blowing for so many reasons, for different reasons. And the Spirit of God told me one of the reasons that wind blows is that it helps the trees. There are some trees that have some dead, dead leaves upon them that they need to go out, that the wind blow them out. That's the same way the wind of the Spirit blows certain things out of our life that we don't even recognize or we don't know. That the wind of the Spirit, it blows things out of our life. The wind blows and blows and blows and it blows things out of our, the, the wind of the Holy Spirit now. Remember Jesus Christ, I mean, um, 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 John, when they were asking him and he was telling them there is one that is going to come after him 
Okay, talking about the, the, the about Jesus Christ in the book of Matthew chapter 3 verse 11 to 12 he said I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance but he that cometh after me is mightier than high whose shoes I am not worthy to bear he shall baptize you with the holy spirit and with fire whose fan is in his hand whose fan is in his hand and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the ghana Born, he, uh, but, but it will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. It will burn up the chaff. So the Holy Spirit has a fan and it has a fire to blow certain things out of our life. That's the same way the wind blows and blows dead leaves off the tree. The same way the wind of the Holy Spirit comes and blows certain dead things out of our lives. In the name of Jesus Christ. Whatsoever that is dead in anyone's life, the spirit of the most high God will blow them off in the name of Jesus Christ. He will set them on fire in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So God speaks to us. He speaks to us through nature. He speaks to us through the trees. He speaks to us through the flower. He speaks to us through animals. He speaks to us through the sea. He speaks to us in different ways. And that's why it's important for us as human as well to always take certain time off. And go see the nature and see how God will begin to speak to you. You see how God speaks to you in those serene environments. Praise the Lord. Praise mighty Jesus. Number two, how God lives and speaks to us, He speaks to us through natural gifts and talents. Is there anyone in our midst, if there is anyone, that is faced with the question of purpose with the question of why with the question of why am i here with the question of what am i supposed to do if there is anyone that is yet to know the why question why am i here the purpose question of life i'm happy to tell you that god speaks in such situation he speaks to us lightly through our talents he speaks to us through our natural gift and talents. God speaks to us through our natural gift and talents. Romans chapter 12, verse 6. Romans chapter 12, verse 6. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith, or ministry, let us wait on our ministering, or he that teacheth on teaching, or he that exhorteth on exhortation, he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity, he that ruleth with diligence, he that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. God gives to us they are those gifts inside of us that we perform them easily without formal training anything you do without formal training that and you do it with ease is the gift of god in your life now that could be many some people have many just like the parable of the talents some have many some is one some they have two some they have three you know some people are multi-talented they have they have several abilities over many things that they do praise the lord god speaks to us through those gifts as we are going into this new year i want us to look inwardly year 2024 shall be a, shall be a glorious year for everybody i said year 2024 shall be a glorious glorious year for every one of us in the name of jesus christ some might be good at singing. Some might be good at modeling. Some might be good at counseling. Some might be good at photography. Some might be good at business, selling things online. You just have some natural gifts. You just want to, you just have that passion. You just have that gift to just turn certain things to money. God might be calling you to an area of entrepreneurship. Praise the Lord. God is speaking. Is speaking to us through our gift. Is speaking to us through our gifts. The parable of the talent. 
You see, God wants us to enjoy life. There is no man that God does not want to enjoy life. And that's why he has deposited something inside of us. He has deposited, there is no man, there is no man on earth without a gift. The thing is that, have we been able to find, find it? Some of us, we are not paying attention enough to that gift. So we are not able to locate it. You are not, you are, they are inherent. We do them you, without even knowing you are doing them. And we cannot look inwardly to find out this. Education should be to refine our gift, the gift of God inside of us. That is the essence of education. So, before we go to school, we need to discover what our talent is and that will help us in the area of what we are going to do. How to find that gift. Praise the Lord. Praise mighty Jesus. So, God speaks to us through our talents and through our gifts. That God, our natural ability, our natural talent, He speaks to us. Yeah, 2024 will be different. In the name of Jesus. In your life and in my life. Yeah, 2024 will be different in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, how do we know the voice of God when he's speaking to us through all this area? We go back to the one place and that is everything that is ministering to us. Wait on the basis of God's word. God's word is still the, the key that holds everything together. That's how to confirm what God is saying to you. The voice of God on the basis of the word of God. God will never lead you to anything that is contrary to his mind, that is contrary to his word for you. So the word of God is where we still need to go to. You see, that's why we say all the time, being a believer or being a Christian, it goes beyond the borders of church. Uh, a call to Christianity or a call to... F <laughs> Jesus Christ said, either we follow him, let them carry their cross. It's no joke to carry the cross. And that's why majority, that's what majority in the body of Christ don't want to do. We don't want to carry the cross. Praise the Lord. It calls for responsibility. Believing is respons a life of responsibility. Believing in Christ is a life of responsibility. Somebody that will not look into the word of God, that will not study the word of God, how can you confirm the, the voice of God in what you have heard? Praise the Lord. God speaks in many ways. He speaks through our dreams. We are going to get there next week. He speaks through many things. He speaks through life experiences of others to, in our lives. Praise the Lord. So, on the basis of the word of God is what we confirm the voice of the Most High God in our lives. Rounding up, let's look at two hindrances. What can prevent us from hearing the word? Even the word may come, but we may not understand on the basis of certain things. There are, there are hindrances to us hearing God well or understanding the voice of God. Number one is, I call it on one soul. How do I mean by that? On one, on one soul. On one soul. I don't want to say unbeliever. Praise the Lord. But on one, on one soul. What do I mean by on one soul? A life in Christ. A life in God that is still doing everything of the world. Is an on one soul. For a soul to be one is the hardest work. You know, is the is the hardest work. So winning is the hard, hardest work. Uh, giving life to Christ, there is no big deal about that. The spirit can. You hear the word of God. You can even begin to cry now, 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 now. Begin to cry and give your life to Christ. The spirit is one at that point. Praise the Lord. But the process for the soul to be one, until you begin to manifest the fruit of the Spirit, the soul is not one yet. So every one of us, we are still work in progress. Praise the Lord. Everyone, do you, get, do you get angry very well? Your soul is yet to be one in that area. Praise the Lord. Praise mighty Jesus Christ. So soul winning is a process. So 
for us to hear God very, very well, clearly, our soul must be one. What that means is that our life must be in perfect alignment with God's will and God's word. Must, our life must be in perfect alignment. You can only speak you can only reveal certain things to somebody who is very close to you. True or false? You have many friends. There are some friends, you can't tell them some things. But there are some friends, everything about your life, they know. Why? Relationship. There are many things that God wants to tell us. Jesus said, there are many things that I'm going to, that I'm going to, say, to say to you, but now you can't bear it. But I will send somebody. It's Holy Spirit. There are many things we can't bear now. That even when God says it, we can't understand. Except we walk with him to a particular level. Until our soul is one. We, so what that means is that we must, stop, we must stop behaving like the world. We must stop, If we want to hear God very well, we want to hear God part time, we want God to direct our step every time and all the time, we, our soul must be one fully. We must, not, we must stop behaving like the world. There must be clear cut difference between us and the world. And that's why he said in the book of Romans chapter 12 verse 2 that we must not be conformed to the world. But we must be transformed by renewing of our mind. By renewing of our mind. Renewing of our mind. Renewing of our mind. Renewing of our mind. So we must do all we can to escape from the world. Do everything that we can to escape from the world. Unfortunately, in this end time, you can hardly, hardly separate between the world and a believer. A believer is living the life of the world. I go to club now. To go to club on a Friday or Saturday. And I expect divine direction. What relationship as light and darkness? Can they coexist? No, they can't. They can't. The child of God can't be doing that and expect God to, to give you coincide. Even if God is trying to direct you, there will be another voice that will be telling you, that, that will be trying to confuse the person. That shall not be any one of us in the name of Jesus Christ. So our soul needs to be one. If we want to hear God clearly, our soul must be one. Must be one. Must be one. So in verse number one is on one soul. On one soul. On one soul. So we must be vigilant as children of the most high God not to become like the world it's it's very easy to slide into that mode of the world especially when you have people of such around you as your friend praise the lord praise mighty jesus christ so we must be vigilant constantly not to become like the world in our attitudes and in our ways in our attitude and in our ways, we must be vigilant. We must be vigilant. Praise the Lord. Number two, hindrance. Number two, hindrance is unforgiveness. What can hinder us from hearing from God? What can hinder us from hearing from the leading or direction? Of God. Number two is unforgiveness. Unforgiveness. On for what? Isaiah chapter 59 verse 1 to 2. Isaiah 59 verse 1 to 2. Isaiah 59 verse 1 to 2. He said, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save. Neither is here heavy, 
that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated between you and God, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. Praise the Lord. Unforgiveness is a sin before God. You refuse to forgive those that has offended you. What we do is we simply create an avenue for our prayers to be hindered by God. We create an avenue for us to be hindered from God leading or guiding or directing us. It is spiritual foolishness not to forgive when people are when people wrong when people wrong you. It is spiritual foolishness. Somebody has offended you. Do you know they don't even know that they have offended you? They have moved on with their life, but you are still holding on to what is not necessary and hindering oneself. But then they are moving forward or they are they have just moved on with their life praise the lord unforgiveness and unforgiveness leads to bitterness all this just is shot god is shot god away from us and once god is shot away from us somebody that is shot away from you can you hear their voice it's not possible if god is shot away from us we cannot hear we can't hear god and what unforgiveness does is shut us away from god he shut us away from God because unforgiveness is a sin on its own. It's a sin on its own. Unforgiveness is a problem that we must run away from. When people offend you, quickly just move on. Move on and forgive. And forgive. Be at peace with all men, the Bible says. Be at peace with all men without wish. No man can see God. Without wish, no man can be at peace. Imagine that. Be at peace. Without wish, no man can see. No man can hear. No man can see. No man can hear. Peace. Maintain peace with people. Maintain peace. Do what? Maintain peace. Ephesians chapter 4, 31 to 32. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger, clamor, evil speaking, be put away from you with all malice. Be kind to one another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, had forgiven you. Praise the Lord. Mark 11, 25 to 26, he said, And when ye stand praying, forgive. If we if ye have ought against any, that your Father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespass. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father, which is in heaven, forgive your trespasses. Neither will your Father, neither will your Father, neither will your, fa will your Father forgive you. So if God, if you will not forgive, what the Bible simply saying is that God so will also will be told his own from you. And it, I mean, he shot, he just shot one down. He shot one out completely. So as we are going to the new year, our prayer to God is that as God is speaking to us so that we can maximize the year coming, as God will be speaking to us, as we'll be leading to us in different ways. And then what that calls for is that it calls for our sensitivity we must be sensitive as we are going into the new year. A new year, a new day, a new week, a new month for us is a new opportunity. Praise the Lord. It's a new opportunity. So year 2024 is another opportunity that God has prepared for you and for me to make the most of life. To make the most of life. So God will be speaking, he will be leading, he will be guiding, he will be directing us. In the name of Jesus Christ, none of us will miss his leading in the name of Jesus. I said none of us will miss the leading of the Most High God in 2024 in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. From January 1st till December 31st, 2024, you and I will hear God clearly in the name of Jesus Christ. In all ways that God can speak to us, 
by his spirit it will cause us to be sensitive and it will cause us to hear and understand every steps you need to take you want to take you want to make a business decision god will lead you and direct you do you know one can take a step and it destroys somebody completely there's a story of this man um, um, um rockefeller okay that wanted to ensure the sank titanic ship of course it was a tither according to the story so he believed his tithing was what actually escaped made him to escape because that could have ruined his entire empire he wanted to ensure the titanic but god told him don't don't because some people they have wronged me already concerning this titanic ship so don't be the one to fall into the trap of the enemy praise the lord so god escaped him from that road because when they built the sink i mean the titanic ship they said even god cannot sink it they abused god to his face and god said me okay no problem no problem ordinary iceberg ordinary iceberg the unsinkable become sinkable praise the lord imagine if you are taking that step or if he has refused to heed to the leading of the most high god that will have crumbled him completely in the name of jesus christ none of us will take a decision that will crumble us in the name of jesus i said none of us will take a decision that will crumble us in the name of jesus and you see you see what there is one step between life and death there is one step between that error the bible said there is a way that seems right unto a man a way it seems right unto a man now when you get to a junction three junction or four junction four junction and you don't know where to go will the person be confused or not yeah the person will be confused because you are the junction four junction you don't know either you are turning right you are going straight or you are turning left or you are meant to go back to where you are coming from you be at the same at that spot the person becomes confused but if you have a sat now or you have a map of where you are going how easy will it be to get there it will be so easy you don't need to take when the sat nav says be a right you just go right and then it takes you to where you are going the leading of god is very important in our life very very important in our life and every day we are faced with one or one decision or another every day of our life every day of our life every day of our life we are faced with one decision to make or another and god will always oh i remember okay i think i'm going to dwell i think I, that will be part of the teaching next week a particular year that god's true dream true dream real it's like you are watching a movie that was exactly how it was played to me real real it showed me life what will happen what's it oh my god god is an awesome god he showed me the picture and I woke up from my dream. I told my wife, I said, I'm not going that place. I'm not going that place. God just spoke to me now, now, now. I tell you, if I, if, if it was not for, I was going, I had made up my mind, I was going up there. But it was not for God. Ah, the will of the enemy expressly will have just come to pass. Life, reality. God's direct us. That's, we are going to focus on that next week, on dreams and other things that God speaks to us. Praise the Lord. Praise mighty Jesus. So what we have discussed as a recap is God is committed to lead us. And in this new year coming, God will be leading us. Even from this month of December, He will be directing and leading and speaking to us for the steps to take next, next year. God might be leading you to start a business online next year. He might be leading you to do certain things. Praise the Lord. And we said he leads us in different ways. He leads us in different ways. He leads us through his word. He leads us through the desire of our heart, through the thoughts. But everything must line up with his word in the Bible. It must line up because God will never lead us outside his will, outside his word. He will never speak to us outside his original plan for us. And this morning, we have talked about nature. How God speaks to us through nature. He speaks to us through all the things that he has created around us he ministers to us 
He speaks to us through nature and He speaks to us also through our gifts, natural gifts and talents. He speaks to us through our natural gifts and talents. In the name of Jesus Christ, none of us will be misled in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The person that misleads human is the devil himself. To every original, we know there is a fake. To every original, there is a fake. The voice of God is the original. The voice of the devil is the fake. The devil speaks. The Lord speaks. The devil speaks. Everything is true. Our mind. Praise the Lord. The Lord Jehovah God, by his spirit, will sanctify our mind in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I said, the Lord God will sanctify our mind. The voice of stranger Jesus Christ said, he said they will not hear. But they will hear of me. But the voice of stranger. None of us will hear the voice of strangers. In this new year, in the name of Jesus Christ. I declare the voice of stranger shut off anybody's life in the name of Jesus Christ. The devil will not lead you to ruin in the name of Jesus. Every plan and purpose of the enemy to lead anyone under the sound of my voice to ruin in the name of Jesus Christ, we declare it is cancelled in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You will be led to your high places of life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I said you will be led to the high places of your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Every plan and purpose of God for your life, it will come to practical manifestation in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I said every plan and purpose of Jehovah God for your life, for my life, it shall come to practical manifestation in the name of Jesus Christ. Have you been blessed this morning? Let's rise up to our feet. Let's rise up to our feet and let's appreciate God. Let's exalt his name. Give him glory. Honor him and adore him. Magnify him. Exalt his name. Give him thanks. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for teaching me. Thank you, Lord. Whatever you are going through is for a season. Like we said, you know, we use that analogy of that tree in the winter season all the leaves they are dried up they are falling off it looks like he's dead those trees in your area if you look at them now they look like they are dead that there is nothing coming out of their life but wait a few months from now you see them begin to bud again new life comes out in the name of jesus christ whatsoever you are going through I see God, Jehovah of restoration, restoring you in the name of Jesus Christ. I said, I see God restoring you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. God of restoration, restoring you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor and adoration. Blessed be unto your name in the name of Jesus Christ. You are under the sound of my voice online, on site. You will... You, you would like to you would love to give your life to Christ this morning to dedicate your life to Christ to be the pilot of your affair. <laughs> For you to know the, the deep secret of a friend, you need to have good relationship with that friend. For God to lead you, you need a relationship with him. We said one of the hindrance is for our soul to be one. One of the hindrance to hear God clearly, to hear God very, very clearly, distinctively, is to first give our life to Christ. The father that is not your father, it will be difficult for you to understand his voice even when he speaks to you. It needs to first be your father. As he said last week, many years back, you know, when I was in my in my in my in my in my tens to my teens age when my mom goes out and she's coming back if i hear the voice of my mother from 200 meters away i know my mom is coming i'll be jumping I'll, my mom is around praise the lord the father you don't have as your father you can't hear the voice but no matter how noisy the environment or the atmosphere may be if your father is speaking you hear the voice of your father for you to hear God clearly this morning, 
you are under the sound of my voice you want to you want to you want God to be the pilot the driver of your life I want to encourage you to yield your life to him and pray this very short prayer with me this morning you are under the sound of my voice you want to give your life in other words you want to dedicate your life to God that God be the control the control tower of your life you need to pray this simple prayer with me you need to confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is the Lord Jesus Christ said that which is born of the flesh is flesh that which is born of the spirit is spirit marvel not that I say unto you you must be born again don't be surprised I tell you you need to there need to be a rebirth in other words you need to forgo a particular lifestyle and embrace a new lifestyle that is kingdom oriented kingdom focused life pray this pr simple prayer with me say Lord Jesus I come to you as I am I acknowledge that I am a sinner and I believed in what you have accomplished for me I believe that you came to this world to die for my sin and you rose again the third day so that I might live a justified life I thank you Lord for saving me I thank you Lord for rescuing me from the power of sin I thank you Lord for writing my name in the book of life in the name of Jesus Christ if you have prayed that prayer lift up your hand or place him on your chest as I pray for you father in the name of Jesus the King of glory we thank you Lord for these precious souls this morning that you have found by your grace we ask Lord that you keep them preserve them with the same grace in the name of Jesus Lord we commit them under you Lord that you strengthen them in their work with you let the devil not be able to deceive them let the devil not be able to take them or snatch them away from you Lord Lord help them in their work with you help them in their journey with you till the very end in the name of Jesus and every one of us that we are walking in the Lord father we ask for strength upon us the strength never to look back irrespective of the situation and circumstance Lord we ask for grace upon us Lord grace to be focused on you till the very end grace to hold on to you till the very end grace not to be deceived by the devil by the deceitfulness of this world Lord the grace Lord to keep up with you Jehovah we receive that fresh grace this morning thank you Lord for, for saving us in Jesus' precious name.